So module six, uh, part one, uh, is all about what we call the altitude and hypotenuse theorem. Uh, before we dive into the altitude and hypotenuse theorem, the first thing we're going to talk about is um, something that's very common in math um, and actually helps out with the altitude and hypotenuse theorem. is called a geometric mean. Okay, a geometric mean is basically when you have a proportion in which the means are equal. If I look at this, um, a proportion is made up of two ratios that, set e that are set equal to each other. And one set of cross products are known as the extremes. The other cross products are known as the means. And anytime you have a proportion where one of the cross products are the same, right? we say that's a geometric mean. So, for example, um, if I ask you what the geometric mean between 4 and 18 is, Right? We would set this up as 4 and 18. These become our extremes, right? So we're going to put our extremes up here, 4 and then 18. And right now we don't know the means, so we're going to say that's x. Now we know that we're going to cross multiply to solve for this, and we're going to get x squared equals 72. So now I take the square root of both sides, x equals the square root of 72, which we know breaks up into the square root of 36 times the square root of 2, which would be 6 root 2. You could also go ahead and break that down to um, a decimal, but uh, you could also leave it like that. So when I go to set up the next example, very similar, right? My These here are my extremes, so 12 over something equals something over 48. Well, I don't know what the means are, but I know I have to find the value of x that makes them equal. So that's x, that's x. So cross multiply. x squared equals 12 times 48, right? 12 times 48 gives you 576. So x squared equals 576. And when I take the square root of that, right, you would get x equals 24. Okay, now just to show you what that means, if x is equal to 24, 12 over 24, does that equal 24 over 48? We found the value of x that makes this ratio equal to this ratio. When I reduce 12 over 24, 24 over 48, I, I get one half twice. Now, what does this have to do with where we're heading? What we're going to go through here is a little process that's going to show you exactly why we can use the formulas that we're about to derive. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to label these vertices A, B, C, and this one D. Now what I have here, right, I'm going to say I'm going to put one arc there and then I'm going to, or two arcs there, one arc here, and right away I'm going to see here that in this diagram, I have three triangles. I have triangle A, B, C. Now, I also have another triangle. If I look in, if A, B, C is this big triangle here, that is an original right triangle. Now, inside this, it breaks up into another triangle here. And I'm going to say this triangle right here. Now, what happens is all three of these triangles end up being similar to each other by angle angle. Okay, so I know triangle ABC is similar to triangle. I know in this green one I just highlighted, A goes with A, so triangle A. Now I know D was a right triangle or the right angle in the green one. What's the right angle in the other one? That would be B. So I know B and D go together, so it would be angle D. Uh, D. Then finally I know um, B would be the last one if I looked at it as one arc in it. Now that is also similar to triangle, right? If I look here, A had double arcs. Well this is a double arc there. So I know in that triangle B, then I know uh, D is the right angle, goes with B. So D, and then finally C. So what happens here 
is you get three similar triangles. And if I write this out like this, from the last chapter we just dealt with, what we do is we get um, the similarity statements that we can set up all of our ratios and proportions. If I take these two sim uh, similar triangles out and I write the ratios, I would get AB to AD, so I'm going AB to AD equals BC to BD, which is equal to AC to um, AB. Then I'm going to take these two triangles out and set up my ratios. I know AD to BD equals BD to CD. So again, I'm just going first two to first two, second two to second two, and so on. Then that would equal AB, right? AB to BC. Now I can go to a third set of ratios by using these two triangles, and I'm going to say AB to BD is equal to BC to CD, which is equal to AC to BC. Now, what you notice here, right, and, and you're probably like, what the heck are you doing, Mr. Farina? Right? So when I look at it, you have to know again, the big yellow triangle is similar to the green triangle, which is similar to this triangle here. Now, with that, we know we can set up all our ratios from the, the similarity statement of the two triangles. Now, what do we do with these is the next thing. Well, if I look here, out of all of these equal ratios, do I see a geometric mean? If I were to take that ratio and this ratio, pull them out, and set them equal to each other, AB to AD equals AC to AB. Notice here, one of my cross products are the same. That means I have a geometric mean there. Okay, now, let's look at the next one, right? Right here, if I take these two, AD to BD equals BD to CD, right away, I see my geometric mean right here. Then if I look at my last one, right, if I take these two out, what do I see here? I see a geometric mean right there. So, if we read what the statement says above, the altitude and hypotenuse. The altitude and hypotenuse of a right triangle divides the triangle to two triangles that are similar to the original triangle and to each other. Right? This leads to, you know, being able to find the missing, you know, side lengths um, only given a minimal uh, amount of information. So, what I want you to see here is, uh, before we move on, if I look at AB here, AB, right, is a leg of the original right triangle. That's that right there. What you have to understand is AB is a leg. Then when I look at AD, right, AD is what I call a piece of the hypotenuse. And then if I look at AC, right, that is the length of the hypotenuse. Because if I look, AC goes all the way here, right? So what we're going to learn here is the leg of an original right triangle acts as a geometric mean between two pieces, piece of hypotenuse nearby it and the hypotenuse itself. Now, the next one, BD, you have to understand, is the altitude here. So when I look, this is BD right here. Now, that acts as a geometric mean between AD and CD, which AD is a piece of hypotenuse, and CD is a piece of hypotenuse. In the last one, when I look here, BC is a leg, AC is the hypotenuse, and a, 
or sorry, CD is a piece that hypotenuse. So again, the other leg acts as a piece, um, geometric mean between the piece that hypotenuse and the whole hypotenuse. This leads to some formulas. Um, and we're going to kind of take it and go ahead and, and look at how to use these. So up above, we just talked about um, what acts as a geometric mean. And the first one is the length of the altitude that the hypotenuse of a right triangle is a geometric mean of the length of the segments of the hypotenuse. So if we go up here now, and I'm going to kind of erase this and show you the formula. What the first theorem is kind of telling us is the altitude acts as a geometric mean, right, between the two pieces of the hypotenuse. So when I look at this, one piece of the hypotenuse would be this, the other piece of the hypotenuse would be this, and here is your altitude. You could basically set this up, but what I like to do is make a formula, and the formula I come up with is the altitude squared is equal to piece of the hypotenuse times piece of the hypotenuse. So in this case, when I look at this diagram, my altitude h squared is equal to one piece of the hypotenuse is x times the other piece of the hypotenuse is y. And that's what we're going to get in this first one here. We're going to say altitude squared equals piece of the hypotenuse times piece of the hypotenuse. So when I look here, this yellow segment here, that there is the altitude. This is one piece of the hypotenuse. This is another piece of the hypotenuse. And we just said altitude squared is equal to the product of the two pieces of the hypotenuse. So x squared is equal to one piece of the hypotenuse 15 times the other piece of hypotenuse 5, x squared is equal to 75, x is equal to the square root of 75. Now, being able to take that to the next step, right, and simplifying that radical, square root of 25 times the square root of 3 to get 5 root 3 is key, right? So the length of this yellow segment, the altitude, would be 5 root 3. Now, if I did break it down to a decimal, square root of 75 is approximately 8.7. All right. Now, the next one. Here, I'm, not, I'm looking for, if I look, this is my altitude. This is piece of the hypotenuse. This is piece of the hypotenuse. So the difference here is I'm looking for a piece of the hypotenuse. But all I do is fill everything I know into the formula. So, altitude squared equals piece of the hypotenuse times piece of the hypotenuse. So, in this case, now the altitude is 6 squared equals x times 4. And if I have 4x equals 36, x is equal to 9. So, the length of this segment would be 9. So, the next formula, if we read it, says... The altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle separates the hypotenuse so that the length of each leg of the triangle is a geometric mean of the length of the adjacent hypotenuse and um, segment and the length of the hypotenuse. Right? Crazy. Try to understand that, right? So, let's take a look. What they're saying is the leg acts as a geometric mean between what I call the piece of the hypotenuse nearby and the whole hypotenuse. So when I look over here, there's two ways to look at it. B is a leg of the original right triangle. So if I were to take this altitude out, you would see the two legs. So when I look, B acts as a geometric mean, right? So B equals 
right? So Bx is a geometric mean between the piece of the hypotenuse nearby it. And if I look, x is a piece of hypotenuse nearby it. So we're going to say x. Then the whole hypotenuse would be letter C. So if I'm looking for B, that leg, I could use this geometric mean. Now, what happens if I go to the other leg, such as A? Well, I know A acts as a geometric mean between the piece of hypotenuse nearby it, which is now Y, and the whole hypotenuse is C. That there allows me to use either leg to find missing information. Now, what I say, right, I take these two and say leg squared, when I multiply the legs, I get leg squared equals piece of hypotenuse nearby times the whole hypotenuse. So now, using this formula, we're saying leg squared equals piece of hypotenuse nearby times the whole hypotenuse. So right now, here's my leg. This is the piece of hypotenuse nearby. Now, what would the length of the whole hypotenuse be here? Right? This whole hypotenuse would be 3 plus 9, which is 12. So if I want to find the length of the leg there, x, I'm going to use leg squared equals piece of hypotenuse nearby times the whole hypotenuse. So x squared equals piece of hypotenuse nearby is 9 times the whole hypotenuse is 12. So x squared equals 9 times 12, which gives you 108. And when I take the square root, x is approximately the square root of 108, which is root 36 times root 3, which gives me 6 root 3. But if I were to take the square root of that, x would be equal to 10.4. Okay, I would take any of those answers for right now. Now, when I look at example 2 here, Right? We have to find x, y, and z. Right? This gets a little more complicated, but just use the formulas. You have two formulas you're going to use. Altitude squared equals piece of hypotenuse times piece of hypotenuse. Or you're going to use leg squared equals piece of hypotenuse nearby times the whole hypotenuse. If you notice you have a right triangle in two sides, you could also use Pythagorean theorem. So, right away, if I'm looking for x, x is a piece of hypotenuse. If I look, I know these three pieces, which allows me to use altitude squared equals piece of hypotenuse times piece of hypotenuse. So, to find x, I'm just going to say altitude 6 squared equals piece of hypotenuse x. So, piece of hypotenuse x times piece of hypotenuse 9, so 36 equals 9x, x is equal to 4. Now that I know that that's 4, I could go one of two routes. I can go and find y or z, doesn't matter. I could find z using Pythagorean theorem if I want, right? So I'm actually going to find y using leg squared equals piece of hypotenuse nearby times the whole hypotenuse. So right away, my leg is y, so y squared equals the piece of hypotenuse nearby y is 4. So it's 4 times the whole hypotenuse. I actually have to add the 4 and 9 to get 13. So y squared equals 52. So y equals, if I look here, if I just take the square root of this, it's already broken up. What's the square root of 4? 2 square root 13. Now, you could have that as an answer, the square root of 52 is an answer, or if you find the decimal value, the square root of 52 is 7.2. All right. Now, z, again, I can use the leg squared formula. So, leg squared equals 
piece at hypotenuse 9 nearby, which is 9, times the whole hypotenuse, which is 13, that would give me z equals the square root of 9 times 13 is 117. But right away, what's the square root of 9? That would give me 3 root 13. All right, so now that is a decimal, the square root of 117 is about 10.8. Oh. All right, go ahead, work on the homework, and let me know uh, if you have any questions.